音が消えないはい、そうだ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、That's a, well, I would like to clarify this session is about the, some unsuccessful user story. Anyway, so the, I'm Kentaro Takeda from NTT Data,、uh, and I'm working as a technical consultant for the various customers. That means, well, I'm the, kind of the, my job is pre sales engineering for enterprise c u s t o m e r And、uh, he's、uh, Kensuke Ishizu, same, to the, same, same company, well, NTT Data. He's a platform engineer and he's、uh, now working as a, also as a, like, like me, a technical consultant. And well,、uh, I would like to briefly、uh, explain the NTT Data Corporation. I'm not sure how many people know the name of the NTT Data, but、uh, NTT Data, as you know, NTT is one of the one biggest and the biggest、uh, telco c o m p a n y in Japan. And NTT Data is a subsidiary company of NTT Holdings. And、the main business of the NTT Delta is、uh, system integration, especially for the enterprise customers. Our business domain is not only for the telco or NTT group, but、uh, well, other enterprise, enterprise customers. So, and, uh, well, uh, we, are, well, we have a dedicated team about the OpenStack, and well,、uh, we have some、uh, open, uh, OpenStack customers. One of the biggest、uh, customers is NTT Docomo. Docomo is a mobile carrier in Japan. And uh, well, uh, tel- uh, from the telco domain, NTT Docomo has a big Swift cluster integrated by our team. And、uh, enterprise domain,、uh, we have a big、uh, customer named Kirin. Kirin is、uh, one of the biggest v i v a r i t y company in Japan. And、uh, Kirin is a big, big user of the Nova. These two are the NTT Docomo's Swift and the Kirin's Nova. These two, these two stories are already presented in the,、uh, during this summit. And we have the, some、uh, public sector s customer, OPSA customer. Unfortunately, I cannot line up the name of the public sector due to the confidential reason. But、uh, yeah, yeah, several deployments are already available. Anyway, so the NTT data is a system integrator, and、uh, we are offering the, lots of the private cloud solutions to the enterpri-、uh, enterprise customer. That is our, our business. And、uh, well, this is,、uh, I know,、uh, you, we know,、uh, this is、uh, day three of the OpenStack Summit. And、uh, probably, so the most of people here, today is the last day, right? Tomorrow you will be going to the any, well, good place, I'm not sure. Or、uh, back to your office, I'm not sure. But anyway, so the,、uh, there are a lot of the amazing sessions there. And、uh, in these three days, Do you know how many user stories sessions presented? The answer is 27. Actually, so the, well, it's the、uh, seventh time for me to attend the OpenStack Summit, and、uh, this the number should be the one of the biggest、uh, one. And、uh, well, that means 27 successful user stories in this summit, these three days. But,、uh, Behind these 23, 27 user stories, there should be some unsuccessful s t o r y Lots of them unsuccessful stories should be there. So, and,、uh, well, during the system integration days in the NTT data, so I'm,、uh, as I mentioned, I'm working as a pre sales engineering. So, this is a very frequent, frequently found and not a disclo- disclosed、uh, enterprise user story. Simply, so the, one of the customers. Came up with the name of the OpenStack. Hey, it is good. It, it sounds good. So, and、I、make some inquiry to the, about OpenStack、uh, to the vendors or system in- integrator, integrators to like us. And well,、uh, it's a big business chance for, for us. So, we will have the well, fancy presentation. We will prepare the fancy presentation to the customer and, and give some explanation and、uh, for some cases. 
uh, present some demonstration. Then customer will be easy to understand what OPSAC is. And uh, if we are lucky enough, so we have the chance to make some POC environment with, uh, with a collaborative, collaborative project with the customer. But so uh, most of the cases, I, I'm afraid to say that most of the cases, customer will find a big gap between the customer itself, the expectation and the reality. And the customer will say this word. Anyway, you can expect that. Koreijanai, say Koreijanai, it's not this. Well, this is a very, very, very frequently found and not disclosed enterprise user story we are now facing. Why this is happen? And also, well, uh, I would like to clarify the purpose, purpose of this session. I would like to improve the percentage of the successful engagement with OpenStack for our customer. And uh, in order to do that, I would like to reduce the number of the unsuccessful engagement with OpenStack. So I pasted the three charts in here, in, on this slide. And uh, well, uh, blue box means uh, unsuccessful engagement, and the red box means uh, successful engagement. So this is a well, uh, I didn't, do, I haven't done any well uh, statistics analytics, but uh, well, uh, just my feeling, but uh, well, more, more unsuccessful engagement should be there than their successful engagement normally. And uh, well, uh, left, left chart, well, this is, uh, covered, this is covered in this session. How to reduce number of unsuccessful engagement. This is uh, my main topic we are, I would like to present. And other than that, uh, central case, how to increase number of engagements themselves. This is uh, well, not the, uh, well, let's see, uh, difficult thing, just uh, do the marketing. So it is not covered, please ask marketer. And the right case, I'm sure it is realistic, but so how to make everyone happy? happy. It's, n it's not my job anyway. Please ask socialists, please ask. Find any socialists around you. So, why unsuccessful, unsuccessful engagement happens? That means a uh, customer gets some disappointed for some reason. And well, customer should have some expectation. And the OpenStack, uh, there is a some kind of the open circle reality. There should be some gap between the expectation and the reality. We need to mind the gap between the expectation and the reality. So I would like to uh, start from the expectation by the customer. And uh, well, uh, according to the experience of the system integration, open circle system integration to our customer, I can summarize the customer's expe expectation to the OpenStack, OpenStack into, the, into this one phrase. One biggest expectation from enterprise customers. So OpenStack is cheap re replacement for our old fashioned infrastructure. A yeah, lot of the types of the, well, and uh, well, according to the customer's culture, it uh, ver various, uh, well, feeling, are coming from the uh, coming from the customer, but uh, yeah, basically, so the fundamental things should be there, and uh, well, there should be some background knowledge about OpenStack, customer's background knowledge. So, customer already knows the OpenStack is open source cloud software. It is exactly true, but uh, customer in the open source part, customer. What customer feel is it must be cheap. It's a reality anyway. And well, uh, infrastructure part, no, no, cloud, cloud part, open source cloud, cloud part. Well, cloud should mean just a infra simply infrastructure. We can simply replace our one with the cloud. But so, I'm afraid to say that. But uh, simply, definitely, the answer is no. So why no? Here is the reality part of the OpenStack. OpenStack brings some painful paradigm shift for enterprises. Customer needs to understand this. Well, and the cost, uh, from the cost point of view, uh, transition cost will not be so low. 
and while simply replacing existing infrastructure will never go well. These two points are customers' misunderstandings, I think. If the company is not ready to change their way of thinking, we, you, you need to say, customer needs to say, courage and I, it's not this, after making some POC or after um, having, having some actual deployment for some cases. Okay, here is a uh, brief introduction, and I would like to go forward to the basic concept of what OpenStack is reality part. So, OpenStack is uh, clearly, so it's very clear, software to build IaaS. So even though the main is misleading marketing statements are there, but so this is very definitely true. OpenStack is to, uh, OpenStack is a software to build IaaS. And needless to say, IaaS is an infrastructure as a service. In, in the infrastructure part, infrastructure means the server, storage network, such kind of the what's the infrastructure level IT resources. And I would like to uh, more go details about the last part of the IaaS as a service. It's a stupid question, but what is service? I just pasted uh, this meanings from the Oxford Dictionary. Well, service means a system supplying a public need such as transport, communications, or utilities such as electricity and water. A regular bus service, for example, the regular bus service is definitely a service. Also, well, well, uh, train service as well, uh, well, telephone service as well. And also the uh, service also implies that these two things, uh, well, there are a few service providers and there should be uh, many users. So these are service provi providers and many users. More detail. Well, I think there should be some uh, healthy relationship between the service provider and the users. It is not uh, related to the IaaS itself. And this is, I'm talking about the service itself, definition with the service, the word of the service. So service provider should focus on the normal service operations. Well, the bus service as well, so on time schedule, uh, flight on time, and so on. And so uh, Sometimes service providers should have a chance to listen to users and continuously improve the service. This is how it works. And there are many service users from the service user perspective. Understand the service menu first. Well, so the operating schedule, service level, and will for the bus ticket. So we need to purchase the bus ticket prior to the taking of the bus. So the how to how to purchase the ticket, how to pay a fee. Many, many kind of uh, things it should be, uh, service users need to understand many, many items to use the service. But after understanding, just make use of it, that's it. And we, if, we, if they have a chance, chance to send any feedback uh, to the service provider, it should be good for the good chance for improvement for the service provider. Anyway, so the, this is a healthy relationship between service provider and users. And I would like to add uh, two statements to this slide. The service provider should keep detached from each user, actually. It is not a dedicated service. It is a service for everyone. That means we need a service provider needs to keep detached from each user. And also service users, so don't expect ded dedication from a service. If you, are, if you need a dedicated service, dedicated bus service, you need to buy, purchase your own car, actually. This is uh, just definition of the service. Very, very stupid uh, slide, but uh, I would like to clarify this thing. And so I need to clarify, I need to explain same things to the customer. This is a real main mind. The, my daily job, actually. And well, I ask, finally, we have arrived at IAS. In case of the IAS, it's quite simple and the same structure should be uh, available. Many users just use it. Just use IAS, that's all. IAS should provide uh, the required in infrastructure according to the user's request. That is how IAS works, anyway. Meanwhile, 
There should be some infrastructure, not like a service. So IaaS is an infrastructure as a service. Then what is a well infrastructure, not like a service? So well, there's no good term to explain this. But uh, well, uh, this is uh, it's kind of a consolidation, I think. So consolidate many servers and build silos into into one silo. So many many servers will be consolidated into into one silo. And uh, well, uh, rather than the uh, yeah, so a uh, single or very few number of users should be there, and uh, each silo is dedicated to the specific user. This is well, uh, server consolidation. And well, uh, these days uh, the discussion about the pet versus cattle uh, it's getting getting popular, I think. So server consolidation is a completely pet concept. So treat servers like pet. And we I ask, uh, well, uh, treat servers like a cattle. And uh, well, uh, in the uh, from the available availability perspective, uh, well, in the server consolidation world, uh, well, highly available servers will be uh, required, will be uh, available on the server consolidation. And in case of the I ask, highly available application. Or high level service, service. It's, it's very confusing. Well, the high level available application on set of servers. This is a well a uh, big discussion about the pet and pet and pet versus cattle. Also, so I would like to present the uh, workflows of the server consolidation and the uh, IaaS. Basically, so the all company should have some. And their own, all companies should have their own line of business, of course. And there should be app user, uh, there should be some app users in the line of business. And well, application division, so app developers should be there. And uh, well, infrastructure division, so uh, operators should be there. And uh, you know, that additionally, so the architect, uh, not sure if, uh, what kind of uh, well, uh, title should be suitable, but uh, I just named it architect. And uh, well, uh, work for the server consolidation. Well, first, re, uh, first of all, application division needed to send a request to rec request for resources in order to create the well uh, application. Well, they need some platform or infrastructure. This uh, this should be done by the email or paperwork. I'm sure, what, but so not formalized way anyway. And well. According to the request uh, came from the app developers, architect need to build and arrange all required resources from their server con uh, consolidated servers. And then next, architect need, uh, will provide uh, will arrange the resources to app developers. Then uh, using these resources, app developer will be able to deliver application to the line of business. This four phase and. I forgot to well uh, add the number number four, but uh, there are four phases, four steps of the work in the, in the in this workflow. Then, what is the workflow of the IRs? Simply so the well architect was migrated from the infrastructure infrastructure division to app division, and uh, if the some demand happened in the app division, then so the architect needed to. Get resources from the infrastructure. Uh, well, I ask directly. So this should be done by the self-service manner. Since I ask should have the formalized API anyway. And operator needed to. Uh, uh, operator will be able. To, operator is able to focus on the operation itself of the I ask. This is the well how service and the users work, right? And we'll using these uh, resources uh, will served by the areas, then uh, app division will be able to provide necessary application to the line of this. Just two steps. This is just a model, and a lot of the things we need to uh, consider in order to realize this model, this workflow. But uh, simply, we can write such kind of a such kind of a chart. So. Uh, there should be some trade-off between server consolidation and IRS. 
individuality, so ability to meet individual requirements. Basically, so the server consolidation, in, in case of the server consolidation, server consolidation has a more individuality than the IAS anyway. And well, in case of the IAS, IAS has a more agility than server consolidation. Agility means speed to adjust the resources according to the changes. So if the if something some requirement has changed in the app division, then app division can make another request by self-service manner. Then application division will be able to catch up the their infrastructure according to their changes. This is what 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 say trade off and well server consolidation IAS. Okay, this is a basic basic concept about the server consolidation and IAS. This is a very very uh, basic one, but uh, it's a good chance to clarify into in, into this uh, material. And uh, well, but I would like to give some. I, we would like to give some concrete example of Corigenai. So you know, Opsac is cloud software, but uh, that means also the Opsac itself is just software. So we can integrate it even in a uh, not suitable manner. Software is, well, innocent. You know. So here are some uh, real or unreal example of the Corigenai OpenStack. I would like to hand over to Kensuke about this fact. Okay. So thank you, Takeda-san. Uh, I'm uh, Kensuke Shizu, work at NTD Data as a uh, platform engineer and uh, technical consultant. So I have many experience uh, about discussing how to integrate OpenStack with customer. So there are many gaps uh, between uh, customer expectation and OpenStack. So today I will show you uh, four case of uh, Corigenai story of OpenStack. So at first, uh, before I talk about a Corigenai story, uh, I will show you a good case of OpenStack. A good case of OpenStack is just a simple case of usage of OpenStack. So app developer or architects in app division uh, send requests to OpenStack to get resources and create virtual machine and build network and create volume and attach to virtual machine. Then OpenStack will automatically uh, arrange and build resources and these are provided to uh, app developer. In this case, uh, if you want get new resources or change, if you want change them, uh, you can do it quickly and flexibly. So app developer can deploy your application uh, immediately. The result of this, architects are from, uh, free from the complicated task for arranging and building resources. So next slide, I will show you the uh, first Corigenai story, uh, one request per year. Uh, in this case, the usage of OpenStack is similar to good case. Then OpenStack, uh, app developer and architect in app division request OpenStack to get resources. Then OpenStack will automatically arrange and build resources and uh, provide their resources to uh, app developer. However, there is a difference of frequency uh, in you in you know, request with a uh, good case. The request to get uh, request to get resources is once a year. Furthermore, existing virtual machine will keep their status for five years. In this case, the usage of OpenStack is not wrong. However, there are very few requests to get resources and change resources. Therefore, OpenStack does not play an important role in this case. So it takes unnecessary cost for OpenStack. This is first case of Corigenai story. So next slide, I will explain the 
Huvan Novaski Jura, it is second collagenized story. So in this case, uh, ah, as you know, uh, Nova is the main component of OpenStack, uh, which is designed to manage and build net computer resources. However, in spite of uh, OpenStack Nova, architect is resor uh, receive resource request to get resources uh, from app developer by email. Then the architect schedule and these resources. The great tool by Microsoft is used to schedule and manage our resources. Then the architects procure the hardware, which is just enough to provide uh, requested resources. This is the reason for the program. It is designed that uh, they can use full of hardware resources without pool. The finally, architects send a request uh, OpenStack to build resources. Actually, uh, what Nova has to do is putting virtual machine. And therefore, it takes a long time to get resources, and it is impossible to change resources flexibly and quickly. In addition to this, the most of the uh, task of provisioning resources has done by human. They do that as a machine every time to receive a request from app developer. However, they are not a machine, they are not cattle, they are men. So I think it is human light abused. So next slide, uh, third cogenized story, human neutron. Neutron is also main component of OpenStack which is designed to control the network devices and resources. In this case, humans play an active role as similar as human Nova Scheduler. The architects start with receiving requests from app developer from uh, app developer by email, this case too. The architects start with scheduling and network resources uh, manually by Excel. Then they design the configuration of network devices. After architects finish this designing, they manually configure network devices, uh, L2 or L3 switch and firewall and road bus and so on. So <coughs> finally, architects send a request uh, OpenStack to build resources. Ah, resources. When they send request to OpenStack, uh, they have to specify parameter to consistent with configuration of network devices. Therefore, it takes a long time to get resources too, and it is impossible to build uh, network resources flexibly and quickly. Architects work complicated task instead of OpenStack Neutron in this time too. Of course, they are not machine. I think it is also human light abuse. So next slide is the final uh, case of collagenized story, physically separated network. In this case, the flow to get resource is similar as get case. However, a compute node put on physically separate network segments. It is customer's requirement from their security policy. But they cannot get the efficient usage of server resources. Then it is impossible to build network resources flexibly. So they are not able to boot or move uh, their server, server resources over network segment freely. So Today, I talk about four corrosion I case of OpenStack. I think that there are some level of gaps between customer expectation and OpenStack. In some case, uh, there are huge gap between customer expectation and OpenStack. They should not introduce OpenStack to their platform, I think. On the other hand, if the gap is small, like case D, they may try to introduce 
OpenStack to their platform. So these are all uh, quite a nice story uh, that I'd like to talk about today. So let me hand over to Takeda-san again. Actually, so there, uh, he presented the four cases, and uh, surprisingly, uh, some of them are real story we have implemented to our customer. This is a well, uh, system integration is a kind of the well customization, a world of the customization or let's say uh, adjustment specific to the customer. But anyway, so the essentially, I have presented the what IaaS is, and uh, well. Uh, we don't need to forget uh, what IaaS is itself. Anyway, so the, I would like to go to the last part of this session, things we need to remember. There are many, many service and product these days, and uh, well, I have arranged uh, well major items here. So the top left part, so public service and the consolidation, server consolidation, I don't have any specific uh, name about this, but uh, this should be a simple data center hosting or co-location, managed service, and so on. And we are uh, the top right part, public IaaS. So IaaS should be start uh, should have been starting from here. Uh, AWS is the uh, biggest player in this area. Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, SoftLayer by IBM, and the uh, NTT communication should be there as well. So this is a public IaaS, and the top left, uh, top uh, no no bottom left left part, private consolidation. Just a well on-premise uh, on-premise environments should be categorized here, but uh, well private product for the server consolidation, VMware vCenter should be suitable for most of the cases. It's a very trusted solution anyway. And well private IaaS, no needless to say that. So, so OpenStack is also uh, already available. And I, will, I would like to present the simple decision tree, what kind of product and service we need to choose. So, uh, well, simply we should start from the, do you need IA, the question of the, do you need IAS? Then the answer is no. Then just use, build your own silos. You don't need any well, flexibility, agility, scalability. Just a well, creating a silo should be okay. Then just uh, build your own silo, VMware or on-premise solution should be suitable for you. If you need IaaS, then we need to ask another question to the customer. Are you okay to use public service? There should be some uh, well, constraint or restriction due to some security reason, data, data management, or a lot of other things we need to consider. And so I, I would recommend to contact trusted advisor about this. Uh, is it okay to use a public service? Then so that you are ready to use a public service, just use it, that's it, that's it. Very simple. And uh, finally, if you are not okay to use public service, then OpenStack should be here. This is a very, very simple decision tree, but uh, as I mentioned previously, so lots of the marketing statement are now confusing this decision tree, so uh, I would recommend to use this slide to convince your boss in case of an emergency. I just mentioned uh, there, there will be uh, there are painful paradigm shift in case of the IaaS, and there should be uh, customers sometimes they request us some pain relievers. There are some. Actually, so that yeah, as Kensuke uh, presented, there are some crazy nice stories, and uh, these stories, well, it depends on the well customers' uh, well requirements, and uh, well, also the well delivery timing and so on. But so, one of the well, uh, one thing I can present about as, as a pain reliever is uh, it is not uh, all or nothing solutions about server consolidation and the IRs. There should be some, I would say, mixed way. 
I don't have any uh, well, good word about this, but I am saying this as a semi self service IaaS. And uh, well, this is not a technical term, so we need to arrange and uh, well, organize uh, any workflow of the semi, -work semi self service IaaS and the policy, well, uh, company, and uh, well, structures. But such kind of things we need to organize. And uh, this is uh, well, basically uh, complete in uh, consulting model, I think. And well, another pain reliever, uh, it is also, uh, which is now available is, uh, yeah, it is a pro product by the NTT R&D team. So it is named Masakari. So as I mentioned, well, uh, we, uh, there is a discussion about the pet versus cattle. And uh, VM, high availability VM itself, uh, making the virtual machine itself highly available. This is a concept of the uh, server consolidation, but uh, so uh, Masakari is now going to introduce the uh, small concept of the server consolidation virtual machine high availability to the open stack, uh, open stack virtual machine. So Masakari is already available as open source uh, in the GitHub NTT SSC Masakari. You can check it. But remember, so these uh, these items are only just a pain relievers. So fundamentally, we need to understand what IaaS is. Here's a conclusion. Well, this is very clear, but OpenStack is a software to build IaaS. No doubt about this. And IaaS brings some painful paradigm shift for enterprises. This is also true. And as I uh, mentioned in the previous slide, there are some pain relievers. But even though uh, there are some pain relievers, essentially you need to change the way of thinking. And so uh, I can summarize uh, how to change the way of the thinking into the two points. First point is don't accept dedication from service. This is from the service side, no, no, the user side. And from the service side, service is not for specific user, but uh, service for many users, service for everyone. Like, uh, bus and train are operating. And also the pet other category uh, discussion. Well, treat infrastructure resources, server, network, storage. Treat infrastructure resources like cattle, not like pet. And also the finally, if you are not willing to have the new way of thinking, I would recommend you to forget about IRs or OpenStack as well. But so, uh, well, Additionally, so the, it is, this is not the all over nothing. And so if you imagine the future plan of your company and your strategic plan, if you are in charge of the strategic planning of your company, so just imagine the future plan, three or five year, three years or five year plans. And uh, is it okay to create silos for you now? This is a question. So if you are willing to change the way of thinking, you need to remember about the IAS and the consult, trusted consultant. Thank you. We do have uh, two minutes. If you have any questions, please come, to he come here and the, the mic is available. Right, thank you.